So hopefully you've seen my first video on how to use AWS API Gateway to expose a DynamoDB backend. Um, I'm just going to build on that a little bit with a, a very quick follow-up on the kind of security side of these APIs, because obviously um, they, they start out as completely public endpoints, so anybody with the URL um, can just hit this millions of times and, and invoke these services in the back end, and ultimately AWS will start charging you for things like uh, incremental services. So you do want to be able to tightly control what people can actually call from uh, from the outside world. And a couple of people have been asking me um, about this topic. There are two ways um, that I know of, at least, to, to actually secure uh, within the, the API gateway interface, and that's to use the API keys and also to use um, sort of a dedicated IAM uh, configuration where you restrict actual IAM AWS users uh, that you've assigned to actually call these. So the first one I'm going to go through today quickly is the the um, the API keys method. Um, it's quite straightforward, but it it also it basically locks the whole thing down so that only people who know a secret key can actually call your API. So again, I'll just do a quick screencast, and I hope we can get this uh, over and done with quite quickly. In the next video, I will go over the IAM side. So how do you actually um, restrict your API to be called by only certain people. Okay, so let's get started. So if you remember the first, the first video we talked about this comments API, and there was a simple uh, we set up a, a post method and a get method. Um, now what we want to do is let's say we want to restrict access to the get method. So so that for example in the last uh, uh, video we showed somebody posting the URL to the service in the browser, right, which is going to send an HTTP GET request. We're going to restrict that to, uh, to to people who know a certain secret key. Okay, So the way you do that, first of all, you find the method that you want to lock down, and you click on the method. And then the one we're going to operate on is the request. So you remember there were, there were four boxes here which actually show you the flow of, of um, of, of, of the request from the client uh, through the server and ultimately back to the DynamoDB backend. But this applies whether it's DynamoDB or whether you're invocate, invoking a, a Lambda service or, or anything else. Okay, So click on method request. And so here you see two authorization settings. So authorization here, this is the one we're going to talk about in the next video, which is it, it about um, there are two options here. One is AWS IAM, right? So we're not going to talk about that today. Um, but this one, API require API key required. I don't know what that is. Um, it says false. Okay. So if so, down in the terminal here, right? So I've actually um, this is my uh, I've actually deployed this API to the prod stage. You can see over here if you remember each time you develop this API to expose it, so you can call it. You have to deploy it to a stage, and I've deployed mine to a prod stage. You can see that in the URL down here. I'm using the curl command line utility, which is widely available for actually sending HTTP requests to, to a back end. So if I just test this out now, right, I'm just giving it a, a dummy comment ID. So if you remember from the first episode, uh, episode if you want to call it, uh, the um, this is the, the stage, this is the name of the API, and this is the parameter, which is the page ID. Now this page ID doesn't actually exist in the, in the DynamoDB back end. Um, but it, what it will do is it'll return a message that confirms that there were no rows returned. But so what it effectively will do is confirm that at least that the 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 request has been accepted. Um, it's just that you haven't returned any data, which is good enough to to prove to us whether or not the service is executed. So if we just run this, and then we see so basically it's, we've got a JSON response back saying um, there were actually no comments where page page ID equals seven. And this goes back to our DynamoDB example, which was the starting point for the series. So now what happens is I what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable API key required. Okay. Like this. I have to say that that's true. Okay. Second thing I have to do, which you which is quite uh, easy to forget sometimes, is as soon as you make a change, you have to deploy that new version of the API to whichever stage you want to go to, right? So we're going to we're going to prod, deploy, and then if you see down here in my, the URL, I was hitting at the prod stage. So if I if I now repeat this again, having enabled the authentication through the request key, 
and I now get a message saying message forbidden, right? So I've confirmed that I'm no longer able to access this API um, if I do not provide the API key. Now, you might be wondering what, is the, what actually is this API key that you have to, to provide, and I'll explain that now. So if you go into the top screen again and you look down in the API keys section, so you can basically create these API keys, and it's just essentially just a long string. Um, I've actually configured one here. You just hit create, um, create and edit, basically the same operation. So I'm just going to hit this one, and you can see you give it a name when you create a new one. You give it a description. This it generates for you. So it's a, a, a long string of jumbled up uh, numbers and letters. Um, you enable it, and then you say, okay, which which API do I want to use this for? Um, which stage do I want to use it for? So, for example, comments API, which is the one we're working with, prod, right? You can see over here, there's already deployed. Okay, so in the right-hand side over here, we've got comments API. So this key is already enabled for comments API with with the prod staging, right? So you can deploy the, the, the keys to, to various um, different uh, staging with, for the same API, right? So this, this key is now um, is enabled on the prod stage, right? So if I just uh, if I just save this now, so what do we have to do is we have basically we, we, in order to call this API now, what we have to do is specify this API key as a parameter in the header of the HTTP request. Now, because there's no there's no way to do that um, in the just in the URL, that what that means is that now we can no longer test this using just the the browser and and, and putting it in the address bar. We actually have to include this in the HTTP. Um, header as as a as a parameter. So so basically, um, if we go down here again, I've actually prepared the same statement in a second, and now I've got a parameter which is a sorry x API key, and then 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 the the, the actual value of this key. So the minus h in curl means basically add a request uh, header variable or parameter with this with this key and this value, right? So if I hit this, and that, there we have it. So now we have our comments back again. So what that shows you is that the, in the back end, we've actually managed to invoke this service. We're still using a, a, a request ID that actually doesn't have any, um, any, any records in DynamoDB, but the JSON object has successfully come back. So um, I hope that was useful. So in summary, basically what we've done is we've 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 shown one of the ways you can lock down access to to, to the API gateway for one of your APIs. We've highlighted the importance of uh, deploying any changes you make to one or more stages before you can actually test them. We've talked about uh, how to how to create in, uh, new API keys and how to deploy them to your different APIs on the various stages. And then we've shown basically how to use um, the the curl command line tool to test the changes, to test basically invoking this API from the command line. Um, so this is equivalent of running the, just entering this URL in the browser, but it's just that now once you actually pro have, have to provide these uh, HTTP request parameters, you can no longer use the browser. So, so from now on, we'll probably use curl as the main sort of command line testing tool. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. In the next video, we'll talk about the IAM uh, authentication. Thanks.